Hey, good morning, good morning. How are you? Oh, you can't see, hang on. There we are, that's better, isn't it? I might need to put the blower on for a bit just to get the windscreen defrosted. My apologies for that. I'm trying to minimize the noise as much as possible. Also, I've got a jerry can full of petrol in the back, which I haven't uh, offloaded yet. What's the time? Oh. I'm going to go the fast way. Now, the eagle eyed amongst you, oh my goodness, look at this. This is the time of year when. This is the time of year when the sun in the morning shines directly down this road. This road is my personal Stonehenge. I've got to be honest with you, I'm having trouble seeing here. There's a car and a walker. There we go. Fortunately, we managed to hit neither. Let's see if I can block out some of that sun. Oh, this is not a very auspicious start, is it? Should have gone the slow way, shouldn't I? The slow way would have been the quick way. That's better, we're in the shade now. Yeah, so, yeah, eagle-eyed, um, we're starting earlier. That's because um, I've got to go in, uh, I'm doing a denture in a day. And the only way we could get it started in time would be to, was to attack the patient on the beginning of the morning session. And, uh, so that's what we did. So I've got she booked in at 8.15 instead of our normal first slot, which is 8.45. There we are, that's a bit like tolerable. So denture in a day is um, only really possible if you've got a technician on site. Or what we've got, which is a technician literally working in the unit next door to us. He's he's independent technician, but we just happened to have ended up with a dental technician working in the uh, the uh, industrial unit next to us so and uh, he's a nice guy and you know he does well out of us and we do okay out of him but the good thing is that instead of uh, having to wait for things to be collected and delivered we can literally walk stuff next door so I can take the impressions and then either cast them up and walk them next door for the special trays or I can, I mean, basically I can make the special trays in the bay if I need to on site. And then thanks to the fact that I've set up a small lab and, um, and then really I need him for the trying and then I need him for the um, processing, obviously. But if there's any problems at all with the bite or anything, or you know, he can actually like be in the surgery for the uh, for the try-in just to check that the teeth look all right. What we're doing is increasingly we're doing um, immediate replacement dentures, uh, where you have, you take out one tooth, or if they're particularly bad, a few teeth or whatever, and. Um, um, we've even started doing some immediate replacement bridges um, where you might take the tooth out for example and then just wait for the socket to heal up for a few weeks and then take the mold for the bridge and uh, amazingly like, they're working okay because you can socket bridges a bit um, so the alternative is to take the tooth out and make the patient pay for and wear a denture for three months which they absolutely hate and which they invariably come back and complain that it doesn't look nice because it's got a black hole underneath it, blah, blah, blah. There we go, we're free and clear. So, uh, we 
we do um, most of the work's done in the morning. So what you have to do is you have to sort of make sure you've got enough time in the morning to do it, because that's when you're going to be doing the impressions and the second impressions. If you like making the special trays, the bite, doing the uh, and then the technician will do the trying late morning, and then the patient then can go home and then come back at four o'clock or something for the uh, fit IR if necessary. So it's a good, uh, and we don't actually charge much more to do it in a day. And of course you can't do every denture in a day, you can't do crowns in a day for example. Um, crowns, we, uh, crowns, we uh, always try the chrome framework in. So I know it's tempting to say, well I've got the chrome framework back, I'll put the teeth on and you can go straight to a try-in. But we don't do that. We always try the chrome framework in and just check it clicks in okay. And then we well, literally just click in, click out. Now chromes, as you know, are um, very dependent on the model. And so we've put a lot of work into our impressions. I mean, and by which I mean a lot of work, you know. I think at the moment we've got three alginates on the go. If only because we've tried three and decided we don't like to and so we've just ordered another one. Um, now I mean you might know what the brands are, I don't know what the brands are to be honest. The, we had a yellow one that changed colours which was all, which was good but it never, uh, it doesn't stick to the trays. The, the uh, tray adhesive doesn't work on it for some reason so it pulls out, the impressions all pulled out of the trays. So that was nice because it changed colour, but you know they've compromised on the fundamental quality of the alginate, which is it's got to stay in the tray. And then we tried a green one, which did stay in the tray, if anything too much, and uh, but was literally hard as as vulcanite. It, it, when it set, it set really, really rubbery, and um, again, which is great if you're doing a full arch impression for a bite guard or a whitening tray or something but if you're doing a partial denture impression um, for a partial you know a partial denture with where you've got lower incisors that are, are going to break off then you either have to decide to break them off and stick them back on again which is what the technicians do or um, or use something that's a bit softer that might come off and the one we've settled on at the moment is um, purple colour. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> but it's it's actually sticking to the trays and when it sets it's still got that very sort of quite soft rubber soft rubber texture which means that we're, we're in with a chance of getting it off without breaking all the teeth. So when we're taking impressions, we quite frequently, I will get a cheap, we got cheap old toothbrushes in and I will quite frequently brush the patient's teeth before we take the impression. Um, and also I will um, get them to rinse out with some sort of green listerine or something, you know, just to um, uh, get, get, get the teeth as clean as possible before we take the impression and then, you know, really, as far as whether the impression should be mixed thick or thin or whatever, it's, I think it's down to personal preference and what tends to work for you. Um, and but in my case, it's what tends to come out of the nurse, you know? I mean, they don't seem to have any consistency in terms of whether it's thick or thin. And I bought them an alginate mixer, which they won't use. So we're really, uh, that's the, the other, the only other aspect we were, of that we're working on. As far as the trays go, we use stock trays, so you know, just like the solo, cheapo, you know, dent trays. But I've got some ribbon wax, and I edged the trays with ribbon wax, two thicknesses of ribbon wax, two widths, uh, and that extends the trays. And it extends the, um, and, and it also gives them a soft edge. Now, if you want them to have like a harder edge, you can dribble a bit of ethyl chloride on the wax and that hardens it up for long enough for you to take a mold. 
and but if you don't then um, and you put it in the patient's mouth and in, the, in somewhere where the tray would perhaps dig in otherwise the wax will move slightly out of the way so you do get like um, a quite nice very well extended impression the um, all, all you have to remember is to freeze the wax before you put the fix on because the ethyl chloride will dissolve the fix so if you put the fix on first and then cover it in ethyl chloride then all the half the fix is gone and then we do the lower impression first because uh, from the patient that's usually the more tolerable of the two and uh, the easier so what I do is I uh, just fill the tray uh, flush and then if you are, you know, if you're minded to sort of put a bit on your finger and stick it on the closal surfaces or whatever, uh, then by all means do that. But um, the technique is really is to get the patient to open as wide as they can, to slot, slot the tray in, you know, diagonally and then straighten it up, pop it down on their teeth and then what I do is I put my fingers either side in the buccal sulcuses and I just instruct them to close their teeth up into the moulding material and at the same time with my fingers I hold their cheeks and their lip out of the way and then get them to um, purse their cheeks up like they're going to whistle and then stick their tongue out and then that moulds the edges. So we don't have much trouble with um, you know, extension into the sulci and stuff like that but we do we do have a lot of trouble with um, just bubbles in the uh, around the uh, in between the teeth, and that's a problem we're still working on. I haven't quite worked out whether it's the we need to use a thicker mix or a thinner mix or a different material or whatever. But these little bubbles that uh, persist in between the teeth are are, are just a blooming nightmare. I'd love to be able to eliminate those. There is um, a rubber-based alginate substitute which you can mix in the, um, the Impregum machine, the, what I call the Impregum machine, the, the automatic crown bridge mixing machine, the Penta machine, and that's got a sort of a light pink flavor to it. And I have found that that is very good. Um, nice results soft hydrophilic to the extent that anything's hydrophilic um, don't tend to get the bubbles on that I don't think and uh, obviously the downside of that is that you have to buy in cartridges it's expensive you know you're going up from pence an impression to probably pounds an impression um, although you know for the sort of uh, dentistry we're doing the expense is not the, at all really a problem when I say expense is not a problem I mean I saw a, a documentary on uh, oh, it might have been it was one of the famous photographers either Bailey or um, the royal guy and he had a he had a model and the model is on the end of a pier going out into a lake and they said to him, you know, what they were after tips for a professional model, for professional photographers. And he said, one tip is, he said, when, when you've got a model like that, you know, like as a young girl, for example, he said, don't tell her to go out and balance on one foot on the end of the pier on the first shot. He said, get her to do a few shots on the bank and then to get her to do a few shots in front of the pier and then get her to do a few, few shots on the pier and then... And he said, you probably won't, won't even need any of those. He said, and then when you finally get to the shot you want to do, which is her on the end of the pier, um, you know, sitting on the pier with her foot in the water, then um, he said, she, she's, she's going to be happy about that because you've worked her up to it gradually, you know. And the interviewer said, well, but what about all the wasted film, you know? And these are in the days when you used to have to, you know, you used to take two rolls of film on holiday so you had at most 72 shots more likely 48 
and um, you had to think very carefully about whether or not you wanted to take a picture of absolutely everything. It was like one or two pictures a day. And, and they said to him, what about the, the cost of all this professional film? And he said, he said look, you know, dear boy, the, the film is the least of my problems. He said, of all the expenses, he says, I've got what I want to earn, what the, what the crew is earning, he said, what the lighting crew is earning. He said, that's without what the model's getting paid. He said, I am not worried about shooting another, a couple of rolls of film. And I think that's a good lesson for us all. We're all here, you know, we, we all expect to be highly paid. We've all got expensive staffs. We've got expensive buildings. Uh, so, and we're charging expensive amounts of money, you know, if you're making a denture for someone, chances are you're charging over a thousand pounds for it, might possibly even nearer two. And yet here I am saying you can save a pound or two with alginate instead of uh, a rubber-based material which is superior in almost every respect, including the fact that it doesn't have to be poured up straight away, you know, you can, you can post it off to someone else who can pour it up for you or you can uh, put it in your lab and not worry about having to pour it up ASAP. You can come back and pour it up the next morning if you want to. Whereas, of course, you can't do that with an alginate. So, you know, alginate, schmalginate sometimes. I might have a chat with um, the angry nurse and uh, see how much this rubber-based stuff is. Because if we could move over to it full time, and we are, you know, like we are the angry surgery, we we pivot very quickly. If we decide we're going to do something differently, then that's it. It gets done as of now. We don't use up old materials. We don't uh, prevaricate try the new way of doing things and if we don't like it then we try another new way of doing things so perhaps I'll come back to you and let you know how it goes we might go over to this pink stuff um, but do try the tray extension thing because that I found that's very good and another reason why that's very good is when you come to cast up the um, plastic cast the, your biggest problem with a uh, the uh, flask in these casts is that the edge of the tray is gets stuck in the plaster. In other words, you get the the tray itself gets embedded. The plaster comes up and over the edges of the tray, and the tray itself gets stuck in the plaster. So then you're, um, you know, you've got the invidious job of trying to hack away around the edges of the plaster to get the tray out. And because you, until you can get the tray out, you can't get it off the impression and you can't, can't get the impression out. But with these long skirts around the tray made of wax, the plaster never ever envelops the tray. So when you get your wax knife out, your, your, your plaster knife, you can go round the tray and strip all the um, alginate bobbles off and and also the wax from the outside edge and also the wax from the inside edge which is usually where it gets stuck and um, and you can then you're in a position very quickly to be able to get the tray off the alginate and the alginate off the cast so and that's I, and that's how I recommend you do it I mean you can obviously if you leave the handle on you can try and just Pull, pull the tray and the alginate off the cast. And again, if it's a full arch impression, then you know, you're know you probably gonna do it. But if it's not, and you've got some vulnerable teeth, then it's better to um, strip off all the uh, the wax and the, and the alginate on the outside of the tray, and then put, put your plaster knife under the heel of the tray and try and get the tray off the alginate. Um, and that's where the strength of the fix comes in, um, because uh, but when, once you get the tray off the alginate, then you can gently peel the alginate off the cast, and you've got a far greater chance of getting a, a decent uh, 
study cast. <coughs> We've got a, a trimmer, which is a, you know, it's a sort of a cheap old trimmer. It's a vertical milling machine. It's got a vertical um, cylindrical milling bit on it. And um, providing the trays are, you know, providing the base of the model is flat, you can just trim around the edges with it, uh, providing you do it carefully. I still think it's going to have my finger off one of these days, but I wouldn't call it safe. And I wouldn't let anyone operate it unless they were really quite confident and competent. I don't let the nurses operate it uh, because, it, you know, if you do it wrong, if you trim in the wrong direction, it, it will snatch. And that's, that is the last thing you want. Um, but you can get, obviously you can get grinding wheels we could, you can set up internally. Um, what I would say is that if you um, get a wet grinding wheel, which is what I tend to prefer, um, I would, you know, there's a, you need a plaster trap and everything, so you have to do it like that. Or um, if there's, if you choose a dry grinding wheel, which is like a diamond grinding wheel, as opposed to carborundum, then um, they generate a ton of dust. And it's all very well saying, oh, well, I've got it attached to an industrial vacuum cleaner. And, you know, I mean, you'd have to have a HEPA filter on it that was changed every week to not to get any dust. And all these technicians' uh, premises that look like Santa Claus's grotto, because everything's covered in white, it is because they've got a dry grinding wheel and, um, you know, and they're breathing this stuff in all the time and oh, la, 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 it makes a white mess. So I don't think you could have a dry grinding wheel in a dental surgery as such, uh, unless it was vented externally, you know, you'd have to have it in a separate building that was literally properly separate from, you know, not even with a door because it would come out the door. All right, so that's it about dentures and uh, impressions. Hope you learned something. If you uh, can think of something that I might like to learn, then uh, leave it in the comments, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.